We're here today with Mr. Stefan Adici from EEB, and if you could start by introducing yourself and your organization. All right, so EEB stands for European Environmental Bureau, and it is an umbrella organization based in Brussels and federating uh, around 140 environmental NGOs all over Europe and in some uh, candidate member states. And we also have a privileged relationship with U.S. and Japan and Australian uh, environmental uh, non-governmental organization. Mr. Radici, if you could say one thing to the Europeans to encourage waste management and recycling, what would you say to them? Well, the first thing uh, EBU could invite the European citizen to do is to pay more attention to the way they uh, consume and the way they uh, throw away. The, uh, uh, the object that they want to, to, to discard. And I think both environmental and financial savings can result out of such an attention. Um, EB also calls uh, the European uh, citizen to resist some of the misleading arguments provided by some local or national authority regarding the uh, increased cost of an improved waste management because all the serious studies we've got here tend to show that improving waste management will result in societal benefits and in job creation uh, for Europe. We mentioned around one half million job creation in the next five to ten years if we can uh, uh, properly manage our waste. How would you describe the concept of waste management in a green economy to someone who's never heard of it before? Well, let's say in a green economy, I think waste will be completely minimized and uh, as far as possible, the remaining discarded items would be materially recycled or used as byproduct for other type of production. But in a green economy, waste landfill should not exist anymore and waste incineration should be limited to the remaining hazardous waste we haven't phased out yet. How would you describe the future we want and how we get there? Well, uh, obviously the future uh, uh, I want is not only linked to, to waste management. So I think if I have to describe the future I want, I would say it, first it's a fair repartition of wealth at global and local scales, and including the environmental waste and a proper attention to non-human being living forms and uh, local cultures. I also call, I would say, for a more inclusive uh, governance, regulating the decision taking and the way we use our innovation, again, at local and international scale. And I think this renewed governance should obviously concern the decision taking for the environment, for the waste management, but beyond that, the daily decision taking. And I think this governance should not be limited to voting during election or just to pre-decided consultation. It should be more integrated in the daily routine of governing and of uh, decision taking by authorities. How would you describe the role of waste management in achieving a greener society? What is the role of waste management? How can we get there? How can it help us get there? Well, we can only get uh, to a real greener economy with regard to waste management, if we say the main goal of our action when we deal with waste is to prevent its production and to increase its recyclability. That means that the most fundamental point is probably to integrate the waste management as soon as the design stage of our product and service because we know that 80% of the environmental impact are decided at this stage. Then I would also uh, say that to go to a greener economy, we need to remove what we sometimes call false or misleading uh, uh, subsidies or incentive. I give you an example. Today you can still burn bio waste and be rewarded with, with renewable energy status, which means that instead of making the best of our, out of bio waste, for example compost, we burn it because we've got incentive to burn it to get the renewable energy we need. Another example is in the clean development mechanism at international level. You can get more 
if you capture biogas from landfill than if you properly recycle waste or even better prevent waste because there is no rewarding mechanism for recycling and prevention as they exist for landfilling improved management, for example. How do we improve these incentives? Well, improving this incentive relies first on the integration of the real cost in the way we produce and the way we consume. Today, there are a lot of costs which are transferred to the society and not paid by the polluter. And when we say the polluter, we not only say the producer. Polluter are producer, retailers and consumer. And as long as we cannot integrate the real cost of our production and consumption, what we call externalities, I think we will uh, not really, really move to a, a, a green economy. So we've got some key principles, such as the producer responsible, r responsibility. Maybe it's time to question what could be the retailer's responsibility, what could be the consumer responsibility, really to make sure that when we buy something, we are aware of what we buy. An example, when you buy a gene, you also buy 32 kilograms of natural resources which are necessary to produce this gene. When you buy a smartphone, you also buy, de facto, 65 kilograms of natural resources which have been necessary to uh, produce this appliance. And most of the direct impact happen outside Europe in developing countries, but we've got to be aware that finally we are uh, coked up by this effect because the pollution we produce there transfer at global scale and the social tension we produce there also transfer at global scale. Can you explain in two short sentences why it is so important that we recycle, for example, our cell phones and other electrical appliances? Well, Europe is strongly dependent on importing resources from a uh, uh, abroad, mainly developing countries. Extraction of natural resources also has a social and environmental cost, which means that if you can recycle a smartphone, you also contribute to save part of the 75 kilograms of natural resources as I was mentioning. In cell phone, We've got some scarce material, such as gold, silver, but also some very critical material that have been identified for the European economy, for the green technology we need, such as the rare air case, but we've got also other substances which are contained in all this IT appliance that we consume more and more, which means that there should be a priority target for proper recycling. And again, a proper recycling can happen if we design this appliance as soon as the, the, the upstream stage so that they can be easy to dismantle, easy to uh, uh, recycle, and maybe better, easy to repair so that we do not have to discard them, easy to reuse so we can extend their lifetime. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you.